Let's continue with more on slices. And we've seen that slices provide a convenient way to obtain a subset of the elements of a sequence. And so far, we've only used a string as the sequence. Now let's consider an example of something we might want to do using a slice. But in this case, we'll use a list, and specifically a list of numbers. So let's just create a list, maybe a bunch of integers. Doesn't matter if we use a mix of integers or floats. And what we'll say that we want to do is take this list and discard the smallest value and the largest value and then obtain the average of those. So discard the high, the low, and then what's the average of that? Well, we could do this by first sorting the list. So we could call the sort method on xlist. And now what's xlist? It's all those integers, but in order from the lowest to the highest. And if we take a slice now, where we start with an index of 1, in other words, the second element, and then go up to, but don't include, the last element, then we've thrown out the high and low values. So what we could do is we could take the sum of x list with this slice going from 1 on up to, but not including the last element. And then we can divide that by the length of x list minus 2. But I'll need to enclose this denominator in parentheses since division has higher precedence than subtraction. Hitting return, I get the average of all those values. So that was really quite simple. We just needed to sort the list, then sum a slice of the list, and divide by the proper number of elements. And now that we're dealing with lists, let's recall that if we assign a list identifier to another identifier, both those identifiers point to the same underlying data in memory. So for example, if we had y list is equal to x list, then of course, if we look at what y list is, if we look at what x list is, we see the same thing. But if we change one of the elements of y list, let's say we want to change the second element to 9,999, then x list had its second element changed. And of course, y list had its second element changed. And recall that we had an is operator that would tell us if two identifiers point to the same thing in memory. So if we say y list is x list and hit return, it says true. Those identifiers point to the same thing in memory. Now hold that thought and let's return to slices. Let's take x list and if we have the start value of 0, we'll start at the beginning and we could have the stop value corresponding to the length of this list and then we get the entire list. Or we've said that the default start value is just 0, so we could omit that and the default stop value is the length of the sequence, so we could omit that and now if we hit return, we get the entire sequence, the entire list. Now you might ask, why would you ever have a slice like that? For example, if I wanted to print the entire list, I could just give the identifier with no slice, and I get the entire list. Why would I ever want to write something like print x list, starting from the beginning and going up to and including the last element in a slice form? And the answer is, you would never want to do that in a situation like this. But there are situations where you do want an entire slice of a sequence. And that's when you want to create a copy of a mutable object, such as a list. So for example, I could have z list, and I could assign to that the slice coming from x list, where I'll start at the beginning, I'll go up to, and I'll include the last element of the sequence. And now, what is x list? Well, it's unchanged. What is z list? It looks like it's exactly the same. But how about if I change the first element of x list to simply 0? Now what's x list? Of course, its second element has changed to 0. But what's z list? It's unchanged. And it turns out, if we use the is operator, we can check, is z list the same as x list? And no, they're different. These are two independent lists. So when we create a 
slice of a mutable object, like a list, we actually get a copy of that data. So if you ever need to create two independent copies of a list, a slice is a great way to accomplish that. And we'll stop there, but in the next video, we'll consider even more things regarding slices.